Hello, once again, Kenny Jacobs from Bloomington, Illinois, going to do another video this evening talking about current events <clears throat> as it relates to Bible prophecy. I'm going to try to keep this short. It's a Sunday night. don't want to take up too much of your time, uh, but I want to touch on three news stories real quick. Uh, <clears throat> tomorrow is the day that uh, the Palestinians and Hamas plan on announcing their unity government, their new agreement. And uh, so I want to read out of an article from the Jerusalem Post real quick. Uh, it says, Netanyahu calls emergency cabinet meeting ahead of formal PA Hamas announcement. <clears throat> it says, a boss says the PA will, will renounce violence against Israel, but no similar confirmation from Hamas. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu called an emergency meeting Sunday night ahead of the uh, Palestinian Authority Hamas formal unity government declaration, which is supposed to happen Monday at 1 p.m. <clears throat> During the cabinet meeting, the ministers agreed to completely halt negotiations with the Palestinian Authority as long as it remains united with terror organization Hamas and to lower the amount of money transferred to the PA. The Israeli ministers also reconfirmed the decision to deny entry for three Palestinian ministers from Gaza into Ramallah. <clears throat> Earlier on Sunday, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry phoned Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas to discuss the peace process. Monday's swearing-in ceremony is expected to sound the death knell for the peace process. Again, that, that, that is possibly true, but remember that on uh, June 8th, Abbas and Shimon Perez are going to join the Pope to pray for peace at the Vatican. <clears throat> it says, the U.S. has not publicly stated its position on the reunification of the two Palestinian group, groups, uh, but it says Abbas promised Kerry that the new unity government would recognize Israel and renounce violence. Hamas has not made that pledge and is still committed to the destruction of the Jewish state. Hamas is a terrorist organization that calls for the destruction of Israel, and the inter international community must not embrace it, Netanyahu said. This will not strengthen peace. It will strengthen terrorism, he said. So here we are. Uh, <clears throat> this agreement is going to halt the peace process. It says it sounds the death knell for the peace process. Netanyahu says it won't strengthen peace, it will strengthen terrorism. Again, shall I say, is the Psalm 83 war on the horizon? Is it making more sense why it says in the Bible, when they shall say peace and safety, sudden destruction will come upon them? And let's talk about another decision that's going to strengthen terrorism. Apparently, the United States of America now negotiates with terrorists because we decided to release five prisoners that we were holding at Guantanamo Bay back to the Taliban in exchange for an American soldier that they've been holding as a prisoner. I'm certainly glad we've got him back, and I'm happy for him and his family. But I thought the United States government would not, nor never would, negotiate with terrorists. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in the future with our troops who are overseas now. Now that it looks like there may be a reason to kidnap some of them if we're going to negotiate with the kidnappers. Uh, all right, uh, now let's, let's talk about weather, extreme weather events. Obama warns about climate change and extreme weather events. Let me go to an article here real quick. Obama's warning about uh, <clears throat> climate chaos... And, and talking about uh, basically global warming again. And then the French foreign minister says we have 500 days to avoid climate chaos. 
and they're talking about man-made global warming affecting the climate. Now, I just don't, I believe, I certainly believe in climate change. I believe wholeheartedly that the climate is changing. I just don't believe it's man-made. I believe that the Bible says in the last days the climate is going to change, but it calls them birth pangs or beginning of sorrows. In Luke chapter 21, verse 25, it says, And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars, and upon the earth the stress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken." The Bible makes it clear that the, that the weather events that we're seeing right now just point to the fact that we're living in the last days. I don't, don't believe that any government agencies, any government uh, restrictions, any, any government programs <clears throat> that add to our taxes and restrict businesses are going to change what's happening with the climate. Yes, I certainly do agree that we should take care of our planet. I just don't think we need to go to the extreme that the government wants us to do. And even if we do, the Bible makes it clear that these events are going to continue. There's another event happening on a daily basis now, that the Bible talked about, and there's, a, there's another incredible story. Three days ago in Bolivia, 60,000 cattle, 60,000 cattle died in Bolivia due to a, they're saying, due to a cold wave. I'm not sure I buy that. There was a cold wave in Bolivia that would kill cattle, but <clears throat> 60,000 people, and it says they now need the, uh, let's see, it says the um, Cattle Raisers Federation now needs a billion, with a B, one billion dollars to repurchase the cattle that have been lost and to create the conditions to face natural disasters. 60,000 cattle. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and look at a list in just the last week or so of mass animal deaths around the world. Uh, May 31st, large fish uh, kill appears in Santa Fe Lake in Kansas. Mar May 29th, the 60,000 cattle die from cold weather in, in Bolivia. May 29th, thousands of dead fish wash ashore in Ontario, Canada. May 29th, fish kill found on Red River in Oklahoma. May 28th, large amount of dead fish found in a lake in China. May 27th, mass, masses of spider crabs wash ashore. It says, never seen anything like this in 40 years. That was in Australia. May 27th, hundreds of dead fish wash ashore. In a, it's a mystery, it says, in California. May 27th, thousands of fish are turning up dead along a creek in Missouri, May 26th, hundreds of thousands, yes, hundreds of thousands of dead fish wash ashore in Texas. I'm going to, again, include this link into the description box so you can look at this. And then each one of these incidences has a link next to it. So you can read each of these articles if you want. May 24th, 40 tons, 40 tons of trout dead in a lake in Peru. And it goes on and on and on. It's basically every single day. There's 20 on the 20th, 2 on the 21st, the 22nd, 3 on the 23rd. It's every day, all around the world, mass animal die-offs. And the scientists cannot tell us why. They're baffled. Which is interesting because the same scientists want us to believe that they understand the origins of the universe and man. And that we arose out of primordial ooze. Uh, I, I don't believe that. I believe that the Bible makes it clear that God created the heaven and the earth, and he created the, the, the animals, and he, cre he created man. 
And I believe what Hosea chapter 4 verse 1 says about these animal die-offs are happening right now all around the world. So let's look at Hosea 4 chapter 1. It says, Hear the word of the Lord, for the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood toucheth blood. Therefore shall the land mourn, and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field, and with the fowls of heaven, yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. If man's activities are, are causing problems with the environment, the man's activities is not necessarily what we're doing to the environment through our businesses and through our lifestyle. It's through our lack of knowledge of God and our sin. And the Bible says that the fish and the, and the uh, beasts of the field and the fowls of heaven and the fish will be taken away. And again, we're seeing this happen on an ever-escalating scale all around the world. Bible prophecy is coming true right before our very eyes every single day. It's very exciting times we live in. And I would encourage you, if you do not know Jesus Christ is your Savior, that you would come to a saving knowledge of Him ASAP. We are running out of time. Time is definitely short. All the signs that Jesus said would be taking place that would signal, signal his return are escalating every single day. Keep looking up. 